Welcome everybody, my name is Mr. Llama and today I am bringing you an Inside the Minds of Masters PvP. Yes, I know it has been a little bit of time since I have done one of these and I apologize, but it was finals week so I have just been busy, busy, busy studying for those finals, trying to get that 4.0 again. Um, so we'll see how exactly that does work out, but yes, this is going to be PvP and I am going to mostly be following Oz, but I am going to be uh, changing it up a little bit and actually looking at parting a tiny bit as well since I figured it's PvP both players are the Protoss um, so they both kind of have to react in the same sort of ways think about the same sorts of things uh, so I, I'm going to focus on Oz as I was saying but I will be jumping down to parting so up in the top right corner we do have FX Oz um, he is our red Protoss and spawning down in the bottom left we do have our blue, blue Protoss ST Parting um, and I actually just did a little cast of parting uh, previously against somebody. So it's just a different cast. Um, but yeah, so this is going to be PvP. And the first thing, of course, that we will be focusing on, of of course, always get that Chrono Boost out. That first Chrono Boost being used right after the pylon finishes. Uh, throwing down your gate and then deciding when to scout. Now on a two-player map, you do not need to scout after 12. Um, you can scout at 14 if you would like. Um, a little bit later if you want. You can you can scout later because it's two players and by the time your probe does get over there uh, you'll be fine. He won't have a stock or anything like that. On a four player map if you 12 scout you will be guaranteed um, to find your opponent. So here we see FX Oz actually bringing his probe out at that 14 supply and scouting around here and you're saying now why was he scouting around there? Well of course it was for some sort of cheese so he would he was looking for some sort of cannons or some sort of two gate proxy and because he didn't see that he can say you know what I feel pretty safe that there's not going to be any sort of cheese like this um, anywhere else nobody would really throw up a two gate proxy like over here as the rush distance for that would just be too too long so a lot of players when they go for that you know two gate proxy it's here cannons whatever um, so he scouted like that and because of that he's actually going to not even scout in this game uh, and we do see parting now sending out his probe so he sent it out at 17 supply right there and this um, this probe of course does mean something uh, for Oz or Oz not probing or not probe scouting because Oz now is saving minerals and he saves up about a hundred something minerals like that and so we're going to see how Oz uses these extra minerals um, in his build right here how he utilizes that to gain a slight advantage as in mirror matchups every little tiny detail like this uh, is is about advantages things like that so already if we look at the work account Oz is going to be up 21 to 19 workers. Yes, he did use one extra Chrono Boost on his Nexus over his opponent, but he also has the extra minerals to continually pump out these probes because he did not he did not scout at all. So you will see parting a couple of times, or you would have seen parting a couple of times, uh, dropping down the uh, or not being able to make a probe like right there just for a quick second, whatever it is. Um, where he has to invest in something else. So really quickly, we we see Oz or Parting get in the base. He scouts two um, gateways right here. And what does he do? He gets out his one stalker. He also went two gate. Um, so both players did open with a two gate. And he's able to get his Twilight Council down before he starts his second and third stalker. So he had his one stalker out. Then he threw down his Twilight, and then he started his second third stalker. This is because he scouted. FX Oz, on the other hand, had to get out those extra stalkers. He has his one right there, but he had to invest two and three before he could invest in any other tech. Because he did not scout, he does not know if his opponent is four gating or not. And if he threw down like a twilight, let's say he wanted to go twilight, he went two gates, one stalker, then a twilight, and his, and his opponent four gated him, he would lose. So by scouting, Parting was able to invest in that earlier tech, and now he can start pumping out these units a little bit later, but that's completely fine because he knows he's not going to be under pressure off of this two gate. Both players will just have those three stalkers out. Um, I do like what Oz is doing here by scouting around the map. This will allow him to take out pylons, um, which is exactly what he wants to do. He wants to find proxy pylons and wants to take them out. Three stalkers are very, very good for that early aggression, um, and both players actually went for them and stuff. So right now he does scout it. He's going to be able to bring over these additional stalkers, take it out, and this is going to force a cancel by parting. So good job right there. And we actually see FX Oz um, taking an expansion right here, followed by an immediate robotics facility. This is a very smart robotics facility. He should also be following it up with a third gateway fairly soon as he still has not scouted his opponent at all. So, yes, two-gate expand is decently safe. Um, it's one of the safest builds around. The only thing that it really loses to 
um, is crazy, like heavy early aggression. So like some a little bit maybe delayed four gate as it is too late for a regular four gate. Um, so something like that, whatever. But here he's going to see, okay, this is a blink all in because he sees six stalkers right there, and he knows at this time in the game if there's six stalkers, that's blink all in pretty much. He cannot. Uh, have focused on or gone for anything else. Six stalkers, it's usually seven or eight stalkers. The one was a little bit lagged behind, and he didn't make another. So now it's just going to come down to a little bit of micro right here. Um, some nice force fields thrown down right there. So once the units blink forward, he can then trap them in so his zealots can get some hits. And here, this is where this robotics facility is so crucial. He needs to get this more out to be able to deal with this all in. So a lot of times, uh, like if this is a player will try and get out that observer first, something like that, no forget the observer he sees the blink all in is coming out and he says okay you know what I have to get this out I'm chrono boosting it I'm chrono boosting out my second immortal this is everything I need to do there's also some probes right here that he can pull as he does have the probe leap um, so right now it's basically a micro he gets a little unlucky there not getting able to put his immortal behind so he loses that uh, and now parting can once again reinforce parting is throwing down a couple more gates so he is going very heavy into this all-in blink stalker all-in and basically it's going to come down to Oz how can he micro this without losing this nexus that he did drop down right there so he gets out that second immortal and that's huge this is exactly it he just wants to keep making these immortals whenever he can he does not have enough gas right now to do so um, but just trying to force back his opponent for as long as possible and pooling these probes so important so many times you do not see players pull probes and it's like why not and here this is the best move by Oz in the game throwing these force fields down he sees his opponent blink forward and get very aggressive right there and say you know what I think I can take your army you have no Colossus it's just uh, a few units out here that I can kite but the second that he blinks he no longer has that refresh refresh on his blink and so he can throw down these force fields and completely trap his opponent's uh, army right in and then probes and zealots can engage get that good surround on all those stalkers uh, and basically just decimate them so now parting is in a very difficult position and I want you to note that Oz has not taken anything additional besides 3-Gate Robo. This, he is sticking all to this because this is what he needs for that production. And also, look, he was not making any probes there. He finally starts making probes because he held that. But if you would have noticed, he was not making probes. 28. He was at 28 when we looked a while ago. You cannot be continuously producing probes while your opponent is all inning you like this. At that point you have to cut your probe production to be safe and until you see your opponent expand or you defend the all in well enough you simply cannot be making those probes. So a lot of players will try and oh I have my second nexus I'm gonna probe 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 they'll be on that three gate robo and then they don't have enough money to make the units to defend the all in. So here once again we're going to see Parting try and engage. He can engage this. There's now this one immortal. So this is helpful for odds. This will definitely uh, give him a slight advantage. He also has those force fields. So if the blink stalkers do try and blink ahead of these force fields, he can just force field them completely in and the zealots will take care of them and do a lot of work. So Parting in the meantime needs to figure out what he's going to do. I would have liked to see him expand a little bit earlier than this. Uh, maybe not get these two gateways and instead get an expansion something like that. And Oz once again is going to scout this expansion scout no expansion so he's going to know exactly what's up he says you know what this is all in and he cancels his probe I don't know if you saw that but he actually canceled his probe made another immortal and warped in the unit and he said okay everything I am doing right now doesn't matter I have I have more probes than my opponent I know that and I need to cut probe production and be as safe as possible because this is going to be a second attempt at a big all in here and he's trying to catch me off guard so he still three gate robo I want you to notice that a lot of players try and text so quickly off this they're like like, all right, I defended it a little bit. I'm going to throw down my Twilight Council. I'm going to get a fast blink. I'm going to do all this stuff, get a forge, go for a plus one, get my Robo Bay, and then all of a sudden they get all in with this Blink Stalker all in, and they're like, oh, why did I lose to this? The reason is because he tried to get that tech so quickly. So just now, we do see that he scouts that expansion. So what does he do as soon as he scouts that expansion? He started building more probes again. Um, and we'll see his probe production once again start pretty soon, I'd imagine. And he gets a Twilight Council. So come on, probes. He's, he's, at, he's at 37 probes. There we go. He's making more probes. He scouted that expansion. He started getting probes. He got a Twilight Council. Now he knows he's safe because his opponent has invested this money in this expansion. He's now going to be a little more defensive. So he says, okay, what can I do? I can get another gas. I can get a Twilight Council. I can start adding additional gateways if I'd like. I don't have to constantly, constantly be warping units in. So as you can see, you know, there, here's the cooldowns. On his, he can warp units whenever he wants, but he doesn't need to be constantly warping in those units because his opponent's expanding. And instead, he can focus on econ, tech, things like that. And he also has a decent-sized army advantage, 
plus these three immortals. And this is really what told Parting that he needed to go back, why Parting fell back and expanded. Because Blink Stalkers, I don't care how many you have, when you're up against this army and there's three immortals, plus he had the ramp advantage, you are going to lose that. Three immortals, even two immortals, would make it extremely tough to win. But three immortals is saying, okay, you know what, time to back off. It's like when you're a Zerg army and you have a ton of roaches and then you push out and you see, oh crap, my opponent has seven or eight immortals in his army. Guess what? It's time to back out and maybe change your tech up a little bit. So now we do see there's the additional gates being added on. There's the blink. And here we see the FX odds is he knows he's ahead in the, that pro production because he's had that expansion up for so much longer. 44 to 26 is huge. He has the additional gas, so he's going to be getting that tech advantage. He's got more gates. Um, he has the immortals out with his army right there, so he's gearing up for a big push. So there's two things that he could really be doing off this. One, he could be expanding and taking a third. He says, you know what, I know my opponent's taking his uh, natural right, right now. He's taking his natural, so he's going to be focusing on getting that econ, trying to catch up like this. Um, he's also getting his out for vision, and he got charged there, so he's going to be going into Templar Archives. There we go, going into the charge slot Archon. Um, just trying to switch it up, because there are these immortals, and if he just sticks to those stalkers, he will get crushed. Um, but Oz is saying, okay, uh, here's the second option, as I was saying before. One, he can expand off this. Two, he can just go for a big all-in push right here, as he knows he is so far ahead of his opponent's tech and economy. So simply having that huge econ and huge tech will allow him to push forward. And additionally, he's adding on a robotics bay because, hey, it's starting to transition more towards the later game, blah, blah, blah. And we're actually going to see a base race, and I wish that this didn't end in a base race. I wish that Oz uh, would have just taken that third and gone into a later game, gotten the Colossus, blah, blah, blah. Um, but he didn't because he knew, hey, um, I have such an advantage at this point. And so you know what? That's fine. When you know you have those immortals, you know you have the tech advantage, why not make that push like that uh, and just cripple your opponent, really crush them. So it will go into a base race and we'll go ahead and watch it out. But we can talk about a little bit of what we saw there. Um, Oz with getting that early robo facility, as I was saying before, was so crucial to getting that Chrono boosted out Immortal and not wasting it on Observer. I know a lot of you like to get that Observer out quickly, um, but he did not. What are other options that Oz could have gone? Um, if he didn't do that, he could have gone into possibly uh, some DT, but then he wouldn't have been able to save his Nexus. Like, he would have thrown down a Twilight Council in place of that, then he'd have to get a Dark Shrine, and by that time his Nexus would be gone. So really, this was the correct response. This was saying, I am going to expand with that two gate, and then by being safe and getting that robo out and getting a third gateway down, I can keep up enough production to keep up with my opponent parting, um, and then I can also have that huge econ lead. I can pull some probes if I need to, and he cut that probe production, which was so huge. By not investing in that, he was able to continuously make off that three gate robo. Um, and simply, you know, he was mining from the second base, kind of, but that wasn't the important part of having that, having that expansion. The important part of having that expansion was as soon as he defended, he would have another expansion that he could instantly start making more probes from. So that was the whole point of it. And so it's not like, hey, now that I have this, I have to make use of it immediately. No, you have to first and foremost completely defend uh, and save yourself, basically. So not allow your opponent to just... Uh, wreck you because hey you're trying to make probes you're trying to get a Twilight Council up you're trying to get whatever tech it is um, so that was really the most important thing and then as well uh, with his crucial engagements right there waiting for his immortal not losing his army I see so many times people will push down and the blink suckers will come in and they got that immortal coming they're like you know what I'm just gonna fight it until whatever and then the the immortal comes out and the immortal will attack and it won't have much support with it and then the game's over and it's like okay I lost I had my immortal there's nothing I can do there you know what wait let this nexus tank damage nexi are so strong there's no point uh, to not sit there and let it take a little damage while you wait for your immortal so that is going to be inside the minds of masters episode 7 a little pvp I tried to give you a little bit uh, of perspective from both players it's a little difficult um, I think it'd be easier in the future just to just stick with one more. Um, but I suppose for these mere matchups, hopefully that was helpful. So let me know what you think. And thank you for watching.